He's the hi. Host. Yo. <laughs> hi. For those of you who don't know us, I'm Jim Simmons, and he's... Gary Kinesny. Welcome to the interview. Show. We can't figure out whether who's going to interview who, so we're just going to talk. Um, undoubtedly, you are TSL, the Sexual Life Online guys. Uh, I don't know. This might get out into AMD. Depends on how risque we get, because I, I Gary, I'm uncomfortable with AMD now. Um, Why? Because I talk about sex, and it makes those guys nervous. I, they're not quite ready for this. So why do you, why do you think that people get nervous when sex comes up? Um, Specifically, how about AMD? Why do you think that it, it bothers AMD versus the TSL guys? Well, in general, in the, in the population in general, there's so much shame wrapped up in sex. Shame and guilt and, and lack of understanding. Nobody understands why they want sex, why they have this animal caged up in them that occasionally gets loose. And then when it's over, they say, oh, my God, I'm such a terrible person. I'm such a sinner. It's so bad. And, and, and the vast majority of people don't understand what's going on. All they know is they have these urges that they can just barely control on a good day. And do you think that's from like like kids or young people or is it, is it, is it across the board? What, the urges? I mean, it's totally natural. Yeah. Everybody right. has the urge. It's, but, it's but a who, hormonal thing. I guess what I'm saying is who thinks it's a sin? Right? Like why, why do you think people, different people think it's bad? Cultural conditioning of of all kinds and and I don't want to attribute it to a religion or even religion in general I mean people even without religious backgrounds have been trained taught told that you know expressing your sexuality is a bad thing which it can be if you don't do it carefully and in the right context um but it's just hard, so hard for so many people to deal with the idea that they have a sexuality. Right. You know, and and then and then they come to us and say, <laughs> well, how do I pick up chicks? Right, right. Meanwhile, they, they just want to, uh, to pick up chicks for the sake of doing it so they can look cool instead of actually, like, being somebody who who is sexual or who well, is... It, it's good to be cool, but they also want to let the animal out of the cage right. once in a while, you know. Uh, and so it's it's really difficult. It's it's really difficult. At, and, and I'm getting to the point now where, uh, even though I'm not embarrassed or ashamed about it, I just let it out less in public, especially on Facebook and online, right? Because. Y'all are just not ready for this. <laughs> now, do you does it fire you down because you feel like people are not ready, or is it like that they're not hearing it, or, or what, or is it something that you want to like hold close to the to 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 the chest, no. like like you know? It's not a privacy thing. It's that if if I speak my mind and clearly, it doesn't communicate because they're just not. At not, the point where they can, yet. where they can connect to it, um, along with the fact that it's not about me. I don't want the guys who are struggling with the basic, you know, guilt and shame, and and with the basic lack of understanding of their own sexuality. I don't want them to feel like they're being pushed into anything. I'm not, I'm not out to push anybody into anything. Right. Okay, one or two of you that have a pussy but other than that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and, and this is relatively recent. I mean, it's just in the last couple of months. All right. I think something that sets, up, sets the groups apart is with AMD, there are people who are there for free. Right. Yeah. And then the other one is something where you've got skin in the game and you've paid, you've paid for some of the other stuff. You've paid for coaching. And AMD is cool because, uh, you know, there's different guys that are there for different things. You know, like and and they cover a broad range right. of subjects. Yes. Beautiful. 
So, and I think that's the, the big difference. But I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with the sexuality part. And I, the thing that always made it interesting or weird for me is like when guys are like, you know, you're just a bunch of sin lusters looking to sin or whatever it was, well, right? See, and I take that personally. I think you're talking about me because I'm the one that's. Well, well definitely not the just you. I mean, I mean, listen, Steve, Steve is a dating coach. You know, uh, I've done the dating coach thing. You know, I, I actually prefer to have a more broad range of, of, of things personally. You know, like I prefer the man thing. So that's it's good, but there's what's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with it. And that's where it started from. And part of being a man is, you know, being being okay with who you are, right? Part, so think, part? Right, well. That's the bottom line is being okay with who you are. So let me ask you this. How, I guess, when when did you find out like who you really were? Like when, when did that happen for you? Is, is it it's an age a, thing? It's, it's an ongoing process. But where I really knew that that I finally understood was Steve Maeda and TSL Online. And, and actually, it was about the third time I took the course. It didn't happen the first time. Because, honestly, the first time that I did TSL Online, I didn't do the work. I, I, same. I quit. I quit, and I, I told him, I said, it's too hard. I can't. I just can't do this. You know, I can't walk up to a stranger and just ask him you know, questions about masturbating or, or, yeah. Yeah. or whatever it was. I don't, you know, uh, so I actually quit too because I, and you know, we'll get into it later, but I, I had like kind of bad social anxiety. So, kind of bad. Yeah. Kind of people check this out. Kind of bad. What a line of bullshit that is. <laughs> he could hardly leave the house. So, yeah. So I had, I had bad social anxiety, but the thing, same thing, you know, like once I started doing like identity work, then, you know, I don't know if we're supposed to plug the thing, but at TSL, we do something called the Identity Workbook. And it's something where you sit down and you actually, you, you take, you take a, you know, a note of who you are. What do you like? What do you not like? Do you know, do you know what you like? You know, how is your family life? What do you want? Uh, and it's a big thing. And it was super. And I, when I actually worked, you know, with Jim when he was doing his, finally. Uh, <laughs> so um, then how long did it take you to do? The identity workbook? Yeah. How long? About five years? Right. I, it's an ongoing process. Um, the first time through, geez, I can't even remember, uh, it, a couple of months to fill in the blanks. And when I say fill in the blanks, a lot of the questions were answered with less than a sentence. All right. Um, I had a problem because back in in those days, it, it was all written by Steve, and it was all a very emotional perspective, which I had a real hard time understanding. Really? Yeah, okay. that's what made it difficult for me. Now, is that a communication style that's different for you? No, it's a disability okay. that I have, um, and there's a name for it. I I I, I forget, but. I feel emotion, I have emotion, but it's very difficult for me to attach a name to it. Okay. And this is something about the right brain talking to the left brain. I experience this, but it's but in terms of emotion it's very difficult for me to, to, to put names put it, on. Put it into words. I had to actually invent a vocabulary to use to describe these wow. emotions. And how did you do that? <sighs> I think the first step was to realize that I actually felt. And I think it's a big thing. And I don't think very many people know how, that they do. And the ones they do, they, you know, I, don't, I don't think you're alone at all. So you, you it's a, it's a you, known yeah. disability. Right. And, you know, like people that have epileptic, ep, epileptic seizures, there are some of them that something happens to the the divided the corpus callosum the thing that divides the left and half, right half of the brain and after they've had these seizures this guy can pick up a comb and he knows exactly what to do with it he knows what this is but if you ask him what's that called he's completely lost well i was the same way with emotion right okay all right i had them although i, I got to admit because of my family background, I didn't allow myself to experience them as thoroughly and deeply as, as you know. Uh, I come from a family of Stoics. Right. I do too. 
And I, I definitely know exactly how you feel. Yeah. So, but nevertheless, they were they were obviously there, and I had to find a way to identify them. Yeah. Okay. And then eventually, you know, slice them a little bit finer. Saying you're angry is only the beginning. What uh, angry? How? Are you hurt? Are are you offended? Are you afraid? Are you you know? Are you jealous? Why? What is this anger? This thing you're calling anger, throwing in this big basket. If you look in there and sort it out, you know you can slice it a lot more finely. But that that took time. Now, do you think doing something like an identity workbook helped, like bring it to the forefront of your mind, where you oh, can definitely. say, "Oh, you know, I'm not just pissed off. I'm pissed off because." Or not like, maybe not an intellectual, you know, like, because somebody said something to me. It's like, oh, you know what? I realize that I'm, you know, I feel inadequate. I'm not mad. I mean, ina- I'm feeling inadequate. Exactly. Or, exactly. you know, like, I'm jealous. It's not that I'm mad at anything. I'm just jealous. Right. Or I, you know, I feel offended or, you know, this is resentment. I resent this. It, but... It all ends up in that big basket we call anger until until you start to pay attention, until you start to think this through and sort out all the different kinds of anger that you have. And, and that only happens with self-examination. And maybe you can do this on your own. You know, maybe you'll dedicate yourself to your own personal project. But I think for most people it's a lot simpler and it keeps you on track to do it in an organized program. And TSL Online is an organized program. Believe me, this identity workbook we're talking about has been revised several times and will be revised again yeah. uh, by by a s- small group of us, you know, that, that have taken it on as a project. So... You know, this is a very, very developed, systematic curriculum that TSL Online has. And so that's, I I think, the for most people, the best way to, you know, explore their own identity and who they are. And that's the foundation. That's the foundation, guys. Right. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I'm losing patience. <laughs> Answering questions... Uh, they're you know really simple and really basic all right but let's say that you are having to answer questions that are simple and basic say say for the masses right like guys mm-hmm. i mean there are you know a lot of guys in the world and a lot of guys don't know how to be men right they it's know how hard. to be guys yeah it's hard some of them don't even know how to be guys so it's hard what i guess what would you say to people who who really don't know they don't even know that they don't know how to be men right like what mm-hmm. is and I yes. think that's one of the biggest problems. So I think a good thing about uh, like something like Osman's development is that it allows you, you know, at least somebody knows, you know, that they want to be, you know, they're, they're on the road, right? They're walking down the road of, man, I want to be a man, right? And, and, and but the, I think the Which problem is... Which puts them a few steps ahead of a lot of people, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, especially nowadays, right, where we've got all of this, you know, feminine this and that i mean i don't know I mean, being a man is different to everybody all right and everyone's got their own their own road to walk but um i'm kind of losing track of where i was going with that but uh you know it's one of those what would you say to somebody who who say for the beginner guys right like what's you're right i mean i i should give our amd guys credit in that they're making an effort and they know they want something better, and that alone puts them ahead of right. the average, the average man out there who just puts one foot in front of the other and tries to make it through the day and pay the bills at the end of the month, and that's all the more he knows. And he wonders why everything is so fucked up around him. You know, at least you guys see that there is something better, and you want to try to get there somehow. You don't know how. You don't have a fucking clue how you're going to get there, but you want to get there. So that, that, and I should be giving you full, you know, full credit for knowing that there's something better and and being willing to make the effort. 
So I still don't have very much fucking patience with you, <laughs> but you're, you're right. you, at least you know there's something better out there. Well, I'm finding too. One of the things that I actually like about AMD is the different because uh, it. it uh, I'm honestly, it kind of annoys me too with some of the things. But some of the things that I like is the difference in personalities, though. We got a range, yeah, buddy. You we know? got a range. So I mean, there's guys on this group that are that are gurus for for you know weight, you know f- fitness. There's guys that are gurus in, you know, they're hypnotherapists. There's uh-huh. guys in this group that are gurus in, you know, sexuality. And we haven't really brought it up, but there's a lot of guys who know a lot about financial things and, and uh, the basic personal finance and probably a lot of larger financial stuff. Um, the range of people is, is really amazing. Um, but a lot of you don't speak up. A lot of fucking lurkers out they're, there. Well, yeah, they're sad. You know, and that's, you know, that's sad because I was going to kind of move on to this anyway. But I don't think people realize how lucky they are, especially even in that group, some of them, to have like an, a men's group. Right? Oh, yeah. Hello. Like being part of something. And it's not being part of like, you know, to me, like red pill, like, oh, men, like a, a meninist or whatever they call it. Right. Those male feminists. Oh, yeah, right. Whatever. Or chauvinist or, you know, I don't know what you want to call it. Those fucking whatever guys, right? Pussies. But <laughs> those fucking pussies. But you know, right. like I, I really think that it's 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 really really important to to have a group, you know, where you can be a man, you know, and you can express yourself in in manly way, manly, not you know, just in any way amongst uh, your peers, right? Without fear of reprisal, without people thinking, you know, and that sometimes you might think, you know, like honestly, the guy who who was out there that said that we're all just you know sinners. Hey, you know that's okay. And he, I feel like a guy like that could have stayed and gotten a lot out of it. And he could have said, "Hey, you know, I just choose to ignore the part that I don't like, but here's the things that I want." But you know, ultimately, I think that mm, a lot of people do they do blame when they're starting to throw names out there like that. But uh, that's true. Yeah, and you've got to have the the perspective where you say, "Well, I I'm not buying into that part, but we have some valuable things over here." And for a lot of people, the part they don't buy into is enough to make them leave and not right. value the rest of it appropriately. Um, so how, how have you been in men's groups like for a long time? Or is this a newer thing for you? I think what what we would call men's groups today... Uh, probably since my wife died 10 years ago. Okay. Probably over the last 10 years. Um, before that, you got to understand, your dad and your grandpa went to the barbershop, you know, and that's where men... Or, or war. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I and, mean... And, or, or the mill. Right. Remember, women, did, women didn't work in factories until the 70s. So... Before that time, that's where men were with men, and that's how you learn to act. And, and quite honestly, I mean, I, I worked in the steel mills around Pittsburgh, and I was drug kicking and screaming into manhood. You've, you've got to do it just to survive in that environment, just to keep up. Uh, and so it's always been there, or at least the option for it has always right. been there. But... This is so much better. The things that we've done online with men's communities over the last roughly ten years, right. since it, the since the internet took off, <laughs> yeah, it's it's so much better because you have access to people who really and truly understand that you wouldn't necessarily get that at the barber shop or in in the mill or or you know in the army, right. We have, because this is a worldwide reach, you can get to the best people in the fucking world. Yeah, yeah, and it's interesting because you can go on, I mean, I, I go on Instagram and, like, I'm a jujitsu guy, and it's mm-hmm. funny because Instagram, like, big time, like, famous jujitsu people comment on your stuff and they're like, oh, you're doing good things, or, you know, they tell you about your technique or whatever, and it's like, you know, some guy in, well, for, you know, San Diego is kind of the mecca for jujitsu, but it's, you know, even a, Six hours away from me, mm-hmm. and, and they can somebody can look at that video or whatever, or even what you're doing. Like, man, you're doing good things, or hey, try this thing instead. 
Or even someone can just say, hey, I saw that you did this move this way. Why don't you try it? And they'll send you a YouTube video. You know, so, I mean, it's the, the technology nowadays is keep, is helping. It, it gives us access to things that men never had access to before. You have the opportunity. And, and even though there's always been men around, to use as an example, very seldom did they understand who they were or how they got there. All they could say is, watch this kid. That's all they had. So, yeah, this is this is a tremendous opportunity. We can bring a big piece of, of this generation of men forward farther than ever before. And the next one farther yet. I mean, this is, this can be, if we use it correctly, uh, you know, a real significant part of the progress of mankind. Right. You know, it's funny because I was telling my girlfriend about this, you know, because I've been, I've been involved with TSL for like, what, eight years or something? So, and it's obviously a big thing. Some on the internet doing it. <laughs> but, um, uh, so I tell my girlfriend about it, and it was the funniest thing because she was like, "Wait, this is a th that's a thing. Yeah, that's, that's a thing. Funny. Guys need that." And I'm like, "Yeah." And she's like, "Well, girls don't need that." And I'm like, well, "Oh, really?" Yeah. And I'm like, "Well, what's Mary Claire magazine? You know, like what is really? what, what, you know what are you doing with Cosmo? Right? It's like 13 ways to have a better orgasm. Right? That's the same thing. It's articles written by women for women. You know." And listen, I've been out on Girls' Night Out many, many times in my life, mm -hmm. uh, and they have that group. I mean, they, they do the same thing. It's just a little bit more close knit because it's probably more socially acceptable to go out and you know have a couple of glasses of wine with all your girlfriends and complain about guys or money or kids or you know whatever, like all the feminine stuff. Talking about femininity, well, right? Do they ever get down to the basic insecurities that women have? Oh my God! All the body image problems and the the basic not good enough. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. I, and I see. I mean, I don't really want to. Since it's on the internet, I'll leave it out. But I know people who have really insecure friends that are all girls, and you can see the cat fights. You know, especially because I'm really good at the social thing, right? I uh -huh. see who's where, and you know who has no self esteem, and who has self esteem, and who's trying to cock block the other girl. You uh -huh. know. Uh, you know, like, uh, so it's it's always interesting because I just saw a girl, I'm trying not to use names or people, but I just saw a girl that was like, you know, told another girl with a boyfriend. She was like, some guy thought she was cute mm -hmm. and the other girl has a boyfriend. And it, so the girl that was into the other, I don't know, it's hard to do. But anyway, so the one girl tells the guy that she's interested. You and this other chick with a boyfriend, she didn't mm -hmm. say, right? You guys look like brother and sister, which is her throwing her friend under the bus trying to cock block her, right? Uh, but I'm like, why didn't you just say, oh, this? Is, if you really wanted to cock block him, though, why didn't you? I mean, maybe it's just like the chick code or whatever. It sounded cute, right. but she was really. She's like, don't you think you guys look the, the same? You guys look like brother because no girl wants to date her brother. No, you know. Yeah. So it was it was funny because I got and I was and I look and I was like, did I just see that? And I'm like. And, uh, you know, it just made me laugh. And I was like, mm, that's really weird. Like, you just got cock blocked and you have a boyfriend. So, uh, yeah, it was interesting. I, I don't know. But just After it's a secure. while, you begin to realize, and it took me quite a long time to realize when you're running up against the insecurities that women have, that basic not good enough, the body image issues and... It's amazingly widespread. I don't know what we do as a society to women, something during their teenage years that really twists their perspective. And, and it's, it, the, a bare minority of women come through that time with their self-esteem intact. You know, with their self-respect intact and thinking that they're pretty decent human beings and they're good-looking and they're strong and they're smart. Uh, 
there's something about the process of growing up during the teenage years that, <laughs> that we really we we don't help women very much and so they emerge from that needing the kind of support that that other women can give them well i've got I, I, obviously a man can't give them that right oh no uh, yeah. if, if if you get hooked up with a woman who really has that deep not good enough insecurity do not believe for a moment that you can love her out of it no that if you love her enough and tell her she's beautiful enough and do it hard enough and and for years you can eventually love her out. you cannot fucking love her out of it she yeah well she's never gonna love herself so who right how can it you know it's not gonna work She'll no matter how much you do yeah so you're in for a rough ride i've had an insecure girlfriend in my yeah life. either bail early or plan on being in for a long hard ride or you get your car keyed that's <laughs> part of the long ride okay so since this is supposed to be an interview though like uh, i've got a couple questions what brought you to tsl um let's see i was i was working my way through uh pua pickup stuff okay you know david d'angelo and on and steps and steps and i came across nick sparks nick quick out in oh nick in quick. las vegas oh uh, yeah uh, not not Nick Sparks, Nick, Nick Quick. Quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, two different guys. Yeah, and um, very vastly different. <laughs> uh, yes, very. And I and I was entertained. I was entertained by Nick's stuff, and he had a seminar with he and Steve Maeda together. I said, "Oh, cool, all right." So I did this, and from that point on, I I, I was working with Steve Maeda. Um, because I recognized him immediately as an extraordinary teacher. He is a truly great teacher. Um, along with having some kind of a meta understanding of, of social connections that I had never seen before. Uh, this guy, is, he has a gift. He has a real true gift at, at understanding uh, uh, social dynamics along with the fact that he is a very very good teacher and i think because of that he has over the years attracted people to him that have the teaching aptitude that would be you yeah and me and <laughs> half a dozen others because you know teachers recognize each other and and so from that point on yeah i was tsl would you think, as a side note, I guess because we have more of like a round table at TSL than like PUA guys are like coaches. You do this, you get Y. You know, it's like you do X, you get Y result. You do X, you get Y result. And we're more, I mean, obviously that's here. But I, I think that's always something that interested me, whereas it was like I, I hate authority, right? So I don't like taking classes because people tell me what to do, and I don't fucking like being told what to do. You know, that might be one of the other things that ties us together. I hate authority. <laughs> And Steve Maeda rejects <laughs> the guru status. I mean, constantly on a daily basis, he rejects this guru thing. He doesn't want to be, you know, the a leader in a conventional sense. So, yeah, that might be the other common thing that draws us together. Because, I mean, look at, like, Rick and Doc and those guys. They... Right also have no ambition right to be a to guru be, to anybody yeah. and uh i personally would like to be a guru oh you're so full of shit <laughs> yeah no I, I would never want to be a guru either um and in fact i i didn't even want to be a dating coach for you know a long long time it, it's been it, he has the teaching gene he has a teaching gift but it it's been a long slow process to get him to the point where he will actively coach anybody and now that you're there, what's good? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, I well, I had to come. I maybe it had to be a thing where going back to like self acceptance, right? Do you accept who you are, and and you know that you are a teacher, or or, or that you mm -hmm. are someone, you know? And mm -hmm. I used to tell myself, you know, even with the self esteem thing, right? It was like, well, you know, I can't coach guys. I'm not. I'm not good enough. I'm not Steve Maeda, right? I can't coach guys, you know, or yeah. I'm not. 
yeah. so and so or and then some guys I would see and I would be like that guy's a fucking charlatan and I would not want my name attached to something like that. I'm True. even better than that, but I never was the kind of guy who goes I'm better than them. I should coach. It was like those guys suck. Why are they even co-? like I wouldn't coach and I'm a hundred times better than them. Why are they even t- coaching? It, it takes you're correct in that it takes time to work through the self esteem level because for years I had people who would you know walk up to me and say well what do what do we do and they do this on on a, like a weekly basis like they expect me to to lead them and I'm, and I don't want any part of that right you yeah know? I don't I don't like that either. I mean it and took, I, I it, feel like I'm a, le- a leadership quality which is interesting because but I don't want to lead people right I want people to learn how to do shit themselves mm-hmm and maybe that is what I think is a good leadership quality. I don't know, but I don't like to. I don't like to be the boss of people, because uh, I don't like people being boss of me, right? Like even with my daughter. For me, I was. I always did like, here's your options. Option one is do what I say, kind of, you know, in a nice mm-hmm. way. And option two is get in trouble or not do it. But you have you have options. It's not do what I told you, right? I, and I don't treat anyone that way <laughs> because I hate when people treat me that way, right? So when people start treating me that way, they're like, they're like and I don't care what it is. If someone says you need to. The, the beginning of a sentence that starts with you need to is where my ears go, boop, nothing. And I, I turn off and I'm like, I don't need to do shit. You need to fuck off. You know, and that's, I've always been that way. And it's, it's certainly a character flaw in a lot of ways. But, you know, it helped me, I think, a lot, too, because then I learned out like I could talk to people the way I wanted to be talked to. I could treat people the way I want to be treated, you know. And I and maybe I don't know. Maybe it's something I should think about. But maybe people who do boss people around are—that's the way they they like to be talked to. That's the way they communicate, you know. Um, but I don't communicate that way. I don't like it. So yeah, authority. <laughs> well, well, taking a step back to the learning to admit that we were able to teach. Um, it it took time. It took time, and I eventually got a job at one of our local colleges you know teaching commercial driving which mm-hmm. I do I'm I'm a truck driver it's genetic uh, and I, I I never believed that I would teach anybody but this job came up and it just kind of by happenstance I I I said oh that's interesting let's give that a try and let's look at that and Next thing I knew, I was, I was in the middle of it, and had an obvious aptitude. Right, I was fucking good. Like we, <laughs> we we built some drivers, but uh, it even for people who have the talent, it it takes a long time to admit to yourself, or it takes a a, a lot of us. Maybe that's just what joins us. Maybe there's a lot of people come out of college and say, oh, yeah, I can teach anybody. But I, I don't, it didn't work for us. Now, what, what? Uh, oh, speaking of which, let me put a plug in. All right. If, if you want coaching on, on social anxiety, social dynamics, dating, call Gary. Call Gary. Throw money. You call me. He'll show up. <laughs> he'll help. It works. Yeah. That oh, okay, so okay. much for the That's commercial nice. break. Let's get back to the regular. I appreciate schedule that. programming. Yeah. Well, it's true. I can. I, I am good at social anxiety stuff. So you know, and again, I'm kind of a humble person, so I don't really like that. You know, the- he's really good at social anxiety. He had it so <laughs> fucking bad. Believe me, no matter how bad you have social anxiety, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. It, it's bad. So I want to take you back to the road. Okay. Since you said that you're a truck driver by by genetic, yeah. So pretty much. what is it? What, what what describe truck driving to me? Wow. Like what what is it that makes it genetic for you? Oh, well, that's a little. Those are two different questions. Okay. To describe truck driving, all I've got to tell you is it's a hard, hard life. It's a hard, hard life with good food. Occasionally. Probably the food's never. getting better. It's getting okay. It's getting better. The food's getting better, and the coffee's getting better. <laughs> I mean, for many, many years, I drank thousands and thousands of gallons of the most rot gut coffee you can ever imagine. 
Jeez, but the coffee's getting better. It's the nice thing about being in Austin is there's fancy coffee every 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 other road. There's fancy coffee. Yeah, yeah. I remember when it was only Seattle. Jesus, I used to save up my lunch money all the way across America to get to Seattle and buy espresso. <laughs> this was long before there was Starbucks. And uh, so, yeah. what made it? Ge- you said it was genetic, or, or um, what is it? What's the allure? Since it's such a hard life. No, driving, driving, physically, specifically, the act of driving is the highest level of physical and mental stimulation that you can get short of like sex or drugs and rock and roll. And it goes on for hours and hours. There's, you know, the sound, the tactile, the visual, the decision making, the information processing and you know it's uh so it it occupies a lot of different connections in your mind for hours and hours at a time which also explains why truck drivers have a hard time ever quitting okay and coming back um see i i hate driving i think Honestly, driving a truck would probably be near the worst job I could possibly ever do. Well, my family, especially on my father's side, Mm -hmm. seems to have always had a talent for driving. Both my dad and his brother were really, really good drivers. And this is truck specifically or everything? No, no. Cars, cars, stock race cars. cars. Well, Uncle Joe drove race cars, but my dad was in a construction management business, and he he was a district supervisor, so he drove around all the different sites, and he'd wear out a brand new car every two years. He'd put a hundred thousand miles on a brand new car every yeah. two years, and he he'd order a new one, and it'd be the same as the old one for twenty five fucking years. He drove the same LTD, <laughs> but. I, I just I've seen them do extraordinary things with an automobile. That this is this is beyond luck. I mean, this is skill, and he does it kind of offhanded, without even thinking about it. That's just what he does, and uh, that's how he's always been. And so, I I think there might be a genetic component to it. I I said that originally in jest, right. but there might right. be some genetic component to it, but. We're really good at process, processing that. And I I grew up in a traveling family. We we were always going somewhere. Well, I mean, in the past, you've talked about, just because I know you, it's, you know, this is why it kind of makes it hard to interview you. Uh, <laughs> but in the past, you've talked about, like, the allure of the road, right? Like, is that part of it, or are they separate? Yeah, there's moments. There's moments that, you know, it just really draws you in. But for the most part it's been a, just a difficult experience driving specifically truck truck driving, driving. the yeah. driving part is the good part ah yeah everything else around it sucks <laughs> right you get no respect you get ripped off you're tired you're dirty you're hungry the food's bad the coffee's bad and you're a million miles from anybody you know but you got that cb radio well, not nowadays. The CB that. radio has died down to the point where it's just where it's pretty mean. Meaningless. Oh man! See, that was my only thing when I was young. I had a CB, and I used to talk to truckers when uh-huh. I was bored. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, and and that was, in many respects, one of the good things. You you could have a conversation, make a connection with somebody that you never met before but it's the middle of the night in the middle of nowhere and you have somebody to talk to and is there like a community now for that too do you know not that i know of Hmm. you might be onto something there with your radio station yeah i had an internet radio station but it's not working out The, the, the the royalty setup is is really difficult to do financially the internet royalties are completely different from over the air oh, wow. royalties and it, they cost quite a bit more so it's just not financially feasible sorry kids on my radio stations 
Would you, would you be surprised with a voice like this that he had a radio station, though? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I don't know what else to ask you. Am I well, supposed to keep asking you stuff? Well, what do you say we wrap it up for this session of the Jim and Gary Show? I'm the world's worst interviewer. I think you did fine. <laughs> All right. Well, that's that. Later on, guys.